suppose you could call me uh, a little bit incognito. You know, I think there's a there's a bit of a stereotype out there of people who do this work. You know, might wear purple clothes and be draped in crystals, or uh, maybe even be a bit of a hippie. I'm just a general guy. You know, I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a husband. I'm a father. Uh, I'm a friend. You know, I'm a business owner. Uh, I'm a psychic medium. Big burly man. He has uh, facial hair, beard. He's got short dark hair on top. There's definitely a balding going on. I feel like it's around the crown here. Um, so he might have nice My first encounter with a spirit was when I was 14, and it was through a process called automatic writing. And that is when you put yourself into a relaxed enough state where spirit has the ability to take control of uh, certain areas of your body. In this case, it was my arm and my hand, and they actually end up writing a message for you, you know, on a piece of paper. I think there's a big misconception on how we make it happen. It is very much the case of they are around that person or they are around myself before a reading. They are already there. It's about me just switching on to get that connection. In the beginning of, you know, exploring, uh, my spiritual side, my family were apprehensive. I think they were afraid I was going to turn gothic or something, you know, I was 15, 16. And it's like it's, you know, because it started off as a hobby because I just enjoyed doing it and now it's developed into full-time work. And But they can see the rewards in it and they, they, they've seen the reactions, they've heard the feedback, they've been there, they've seen it, they've felt it, they've experienced it. And I feel like when you do that, then, you know, they really come to a more of an understanding of what I do. Okay, she just wants to quickly touch on him. Um, just concerned, a little bit concerned about his health. My daughter went and had a personal reading done and I wanted to have one done because we had gone through something tragic in our life and I needed answers. And within 24 hours of me having that thought, um, someone said on Facebook, who was a good medium in our area, Peter's name got mentioned more than once. So I liked him, found him been following his page. Face has turned really serious on me and she's saying this needs to be looked at and sorted. I've had readings where Peter has brought up a random name, <laughs> which he wouldn't even know, which is one of my best friends, whose um, mother unfortunately died in a horrific car accident. Peter was able to channel that in, pass on a message. But the hair colour is more like yours. Yeah, I can't tell. Blonde. Did he ever die blonde? Did you put streaks through it? Because I put streaks through mine. <laughs> I've always been sceptical. I suppose I could say that I've never strongly had any beliefs. I was always on the border. I suppose what convinced me from becoming a sceptic was the precise details they gave me about my dad. Um, medical things, personal inside jokes, just his health and well-being, quotes that he would say, those kinds of things like no one would know those other than my immediate family. Sometimes cop a little bit of flack on social media because it's very easy, you know, everybody likes to go a bit keyboard warrior occasionally. I just feel like there's a there's a, a calling to do this work. It's the same thing as like if I was a priest and, I was, and God was calling me, you can't really question it. Uh, you just kind of do it. People quite often, social media will say, you know, like they start off, oh, you know, you're a fake, you know, you're abusing this, you're doing that. But I know you're in a very negative headspace and you're not really going to be open because they're only going to see the negatives. Then it gets to a point, you know, after a little bit of conversation, they go, oh, well, why don't you read me? Well, why don't you read me? It's like, why would I do that now? He talks to me about you're a very grounded person. He also says to me that... He says, you have a duality about you. You can be very, very grounded, but at the same time, you can be really out there. And I feel like you can be really out there with your friends. If your friends are there, they could probably kind of, uh, give, the, give the nod and say yes. But I feel like that being the, the out there you, and kind of, like, I like that extremism of you and what he shows you. I believe that people are sceptical because people don't really want to step out of their comfort zone. Last month was very much, I had a young, nine-year-old boy come through and you know he told me how he passed and he told me exactly what his funeral was like and transformers and his memorial book and the photos and stuff like that and he wanted to get a message to his mum but the thing was his mum wasn't in the audience none of his family in the audience the funeral director of his funeral was in the audience and 
she was absolutely gobsmacked because she goes, I know exactly about the Transformers. She showed me pictures straight afterwards. And one of my goals is literally just to reach as many people as I can because I want them to see it for what it is. That's my goal, to connect with people like that.